In today's video, we feature a Hot Wheels Hotbird from 1977. I'm really fond of these Hotbirds or Firebirds or Trans Ams, whatever you want to call them, because growing up as a kid, I really enjoyed smoking the Bandit and always wanted like a 77 TA Bandit Edition. I've kind of changed my tune as an adult, but I still like the cars. Now this one was part of that big box that a buddy had given me. If you watched the last video, we did the Tonka Heavy Wreck, and then before that we did the Monza. This is all part of that collection, and I believe my buddy when he was a child, had a hand at painting this one as well. The front windshield is painted black. You can see there's just gobs of black and there's no bird on it, no firebird. It is a hot mess. Hot bird with a hot mess. Now the good thing is, it's not a red line, it's not a spectra flame, so we're just gonna paint it black, like original. I don't have to worry about the body imperfections that much, which is a good thing. We're gonna to need to take this apart. We do have a bend in the roof. We're gonna to try to straighten that out near the T-tops. We may replace the wheels. I don't know if I have any Hot Wheels non-red line wheels in this size. If I don't, I may try to refurbish these, although they look pretty, pretty far gone. Or we may end up turning into a custom. I don't know yet, just with some different wheels and tires. But we're gonna keep it pretty basic. We're gonna Paint it black, throw a Screaming Eagle on there, maybe paint the taillights, that'll really be about it. First, we need to take it apart. Now, these are actually really easy to take apart. We've only got one rivet that we need to drill out. The front is actually held in by the headlights, which in this case are painted black. I just noticed that. They're normally the same color as the base. This already has like a little divot, so it shouldn't be too hard to drill out. We're still going to hit it with the center punch just to kind of define that center section a little bit better. And I'm also going to use a centering bit in the drill bit. You can get these on Amazon or Harbor Freight, I believe, may have them. They're typically for like machine tooling, like on a lathe. But what's nice about it is it drills a center hole, keeps it centered, and then you can drill out the rest of the rivet with the larger portion. And this is what we end up with. We should have enough material removed that I can actually pop this chassis off. There we go. Okay, this is probably going to be the most difficult part of this actual restoration. It's the glass. I don't know how we're gonna easily get this paint off of this plastic window and shield, but we're gonna try. If I cannot get it off, I'm just gonna replace it. I have a ton of these Firebirds, or Hotbirds rather, probably 10 of them uh, that are, some are newer, uh, actually they're all newer. Some of them are like really, really new and the glass will fit, but we're gonna try to salvage this one first. The base, it's just dirty. We're gonna clean it. And we will actually grind out these axles as well. Of course, you've already seen the body. Now here's where those headlights are. Nice and painted. It's definitely seen better days. And the interior just needs a good clean. It's got it's got some paint on it as well. Hmm. We will see. Bye bye little friend. See you soon. This has been after about an hour. It appears it's coming off pretty well. So if anything, that paint has probably protected this casting quite well. We're going to let it soak for just a little bit longer. We do have a few stubborn pieces, it appears. I think we're going to live dangerously a little bit here. I'm going to see what this citrus stripper will do to plastic. I have a feeling the outcome's not going to be good, but I just got to try it. We're not going to leave it in there very long. 
We're gonna leave the goop on here. We're not gonna leave it in the container. But we'll leave it out and see what it looks like in a little bit. I know this citrus strip is supposed to be environmentally safe. Uh, it's actually safe on the skin. That's why you saw me touch it with my hand. But I didn't think it'd be that safe. We should be able to reuse this. That'll be, uh, that's a bonus. Like I said, I have plenty of these, but it's always cool to uh, not use parts when you don't need to. So here's where we're at so far. We haven't polished this or done anything to it. It doesn't have the blue haze anymore. It's more like a yellow. And there's a bump right there, which appears to be from the inside. It's not looking too great. We're gonna mess with it a little bit longer, try to get the rest of this paint off, and then we'll see from there if we're gonna replace it or not. I hate to make it look really nice and then use a cruddy window. I've already removed the rear axle. We're gonna move to the front. You can do this a couple different ways. Once in a while, for me, maybe some people have better success, you can take a pair of side cuts, make sure they're small, and the little space in between where these have been kind of bent over, sometimes you can get a good grasp on those and then actually just kind of cut that section out. I typically don't have very good luck with it, so we're just going to go ahead and grind them out. There we go. Okay, in my wheel stash, I actually found a couple of very nice candidates. These are the original ones. You can see they're a little bit worse for wear. And I don't think I'm going to use this glass for a few reasons. One, it looks too nice. It's not original looking. It was never clear. It was always like a greenish blue. The tab's different on the back. But I've got this other one. It's got the tabs, and it looks pretty, pretty clean. So that was with these wheels. I must have taken apart another Firebird or Hotbird at some point, and I just have those. So now we, we ground off those little nubs, and now I'm going to define those lines a little bit to make those axles sit in there nice and flush. So we're using this little, it's like a little saw blade that you can put in your X-Acto style knife. I'll, uh, I'll try to link them if they are available on Amazon. I think I got them from Hobby Lobby though. They're number 13 fine saw blades. Pretty neat. Just put them in the groove. There. You can see we've got enough space for our axles. That's nice and defined. Last thing we're going to do with this base is dunk it in our, you can see our like new jar of acid here. I've got to find my hemostats. Hmm. You don't want to necessarily do this barehanded, so success, finally. I um, actually put them back in my little tool bin. I normally don't do, so they were exactly where they should be. And by the way, these are called hemostats, or growing up as a kid, my uncle would have called them roach clips. Not sure how long my mic was uh, muffled. It was actually inside of my shirt. i um, using a lav mic, and I've been having experimenting with it. That's why some of the videos, the audio sounds a little different usually use a shoe mic, but uh, it's kind of going in and out. So I thought I'd try this. So hopefully if it was muffled before, it's not now. I guess that'll teach me to look next time. Yeah, what the heck? We're going to leave it in for like five minutes. Okay, I lied. About three minutes. I think that should be good enough. All right, here is the base after the acid bath. And it looks better. I mean, it's not perfect. But we're going to clean it up a little bit with the wire wheel. And here's the difference the wire wheel makes. Obviously, without wire wheel, with. Okay, we're all done. We even shined up the lights a little bit. It's looking pretty snazzy. Now I'm going to glue these new axles in place. I just use a little paint can, in this case a cement can, a bottle rather, and they're nice and nestled in our little cutouts, and then we'll dab some glue on there. I'm going to use the medium star bond. 
I'm not really in a hurry for this. Whoa, we got too much. Shoot it with a little accelerator just to uh, make it instant. Give it a few seconds to dry. And she is done. It uh, makes it instant. You can also use baking soda. A lot of people you'll see dab some baking soda on there and that will uh, make it dry quickly also. Okay, for this donor windshield, we're gonna be using Plast-X. Just put a little bit on a paper towel. We've already rubbed it on the glass and we're just going to, at a low speed, just try to shine this bad boy up. That should do it. That's gonna look real nice. We've got some work to do on straightening that out. Start by just trying to flatten out the one section. Just got our little cheap anvil here. Using a brass hammer. I think that's as good as I'm gonna get. It's not perfect, but it looks fairly good. We've got our donor windshield in there. We'll take that out. You see a slight bend there, but I don't think we'll notice that once it's all done. Now here's where I'm at right now. You'll notice the casting is primed, except for on this side. So initially, when I stripped this, I thought it looked great, uh, especially for its age. You know, we had all that paint that was kind of protecting it. But after I primed it, I noticed there were a lot of little holes over here, little divots. Now, if this were a red line, I probably would have electroplated it. But since I'm going to paint this black, I'm going to put primer over it. I'm not going to do that. So I just added a little bit of putty. And hopefully we'll fill in all those little holes. I'm just waiting for it to dry. It's actually pretty dry right now. And we'll see. There won't be much once we actually sand this down. Our goal is to take most of this off. So it's possible that this wouldn't even show up on camera, but it just may. You can see we're taking most of it off. You can see all those little holes. Hopefully they are filled in. It almost looks like the putty has actually escaped those holes. Sure hope not. All right, we are nearing the end. We've got a new Streaming Eagle decal for the hood, which we will put on. We're going to use some Microset and some Microsol. And also we've got a little container of water here. We will put the water slide into the water. Let that kind of do its thing. We're going to brush a little bit of Microset onto the actual casting. There we go, that's more than enough. Get this placed. And I don't believe this is the correct Screaming Eagle for this car, for this casting, but I could not. I actually got this from eBay and at one time the Redline shop used to make this reproduction but I got a hold of John from the Redline shop he's actually sent me some products before and unfortunately he no longer has those so that's set we're gonna put some of the microsol on there and then we'll let it dry a little bit of overkill not going to be perfect, but I think it will turn out fairly well in the end. Okay, we're all finished. We got some clear applied. The decal looks really good. Again, not original, but it'll do the trick. So now we need to reassemble. Okay, we've got our glass interior assembled. The glass just simply clicks into the interior. One screw holding this down. Make sure everything's kind of lined up. Looks good enough. 
and then we will put our screw back in. And she is done. And here's a closer look at the hot bird on the spinning wheel of death. This one probably turned out better than I expected, but we'll say somewhere in the middle. And the only reason why, actually the final product is fine, but that paint, whoever had painted that as a child or whatever many years ago, it actually protected most of the casting, but I was a little taken back by the passenger side because to the naked eye, that door looked fine. But when I applied that primer, and that primer has a little bit of a build to it, so I was not expecting to see anything when that primer was laid down. It's kind of surprising that I did. I actually primed it twice just to make sure there wasn't something I did, and it's definitely, there was some pitting. I just could not see it. So a little taken back by that. Not a big deal. We sanded, filled it. You can't tell now. And then I was hoping I could get that original glass looking as good as this replacement glass, but uh, there was no way. It's just too far gone. It looks okay, but it's green. It's not blue. Luckily, I have tons of these hot birds, and we had a pretty much a direct replacement. Now, I do think the Streaming Eagle looks very nice on this casting, but the original casting, it was not as pronounced. It was barely even visible, even on the newer ones. This is very detailed. Again, I think this was from maybe an 80s casting uh, when they actually changed, maybe it was 79, when they changed the front end. That looks more like one of the eagles from that, but I don't know. In, in the end, it, it, looks, it looks just fine. The only other critique to myself would be the gloss. It's really glossy. I'm not sure if it were ever this glossy new, but I'm sure after the kids play with it, it will lose a lot of that luster. And I think that's going to do it for this one. Fairly quick and easy restoration, and it was a lot of fun. If you see any of the tools that I use in this video that you'd like to purchase for yourself, be sure to check out the Amazon links. They're located in the description, which is below this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those below. And as always, thanks for watching.